You're listening to a Time Machine podcast. Old movie Time Machine. An adventure through time and or space. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Old Movie Time Machine. We have a very special episode for you today, actually. This is not the traditional fare that you've grown accustomed to, that you know, you love. This is actually a sub-show that we're doing within Old Movie Time Machine called Old Movie Almanac. I'm your host, through time and or space, Justin Zeppa, of course. Joined, not as ever, very rarely, but now back in action... You know her, you love her, you missed her. She's just spent approximately 20 to 23 weeks in Washington, D.C. defending Time Machine podcast and our Boom Room Mid-Century Museum, Brindis Reinestotter. Welcome back to Hello, the program. Hello, guys. Oh, I'm back. So good. So good. Yes. Finally. Finally. I know you guys missed me. We really did. We really did. We have just been wondering what's been going on. I'm going to tell you. So, Brindis, for those of you who are not in the know out there in listener land, she is the CFO of Time Machine Podcasts, and she's also the CDO, the Chief Drop Officer of Time Machine Podcasts. It stinks! But really, we want to focus on CFO right now. Long eyeballs? She had to go up to Washington, D.C. to do some closed-door testimonies. You've heard the audio, of course. We've put them through multiple episodes at this point of you up against some very rude Southern uh, gentleman, I guess I'll say by default, but... Was was nothing of the sort. That guy was a real prickling. You know what I'm talking about? He was. Fucking asshole. Asshole. So we need to hear a little bit more about that experience for you because I only I bring up the CFO issue because you had left a voicemail message at one point because the credit card got shut down. There was some issue with your hotel and you were not very happy about it. But all I can say in response is we didn't know where you were or what you were doing. All we know is that we kept getting bills for pay cable channels at the Marriott in Washington, D.C. Do you have anything to say for yourself? I mean, Romancing the Stone 37 times. I mean, that movie came out in 1984. Like, why? Why? Why Romancing the Stone of all... That wasn't me. Oh, that wasn't you? No. Okay. So what were you doing at the Marriott in Washington, D.C.? I was <laughs> talking to the people. Oh, you were out there. Yeah. You were making connections. Yes. You were building bridges. I was networking. You were networking. Okay. Yeah. And what what's the result of that networking, by the way? Do we have things coming down the pike? We have a lot of... Of course. New- <laughs> You guys just have to wait and Things see. That I don't need to know about right now, no. but in the future I'm going to find out about. Okay, 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 okay. <sighs> God. Now listen, I understand the question. I, I the and, and it's f- almost like when I was talking the, to the gentleman. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm just going to get pissed off. You know? Yeah, I'm just. It's it's not the time right now. This is the dude who kept calling you burned us, right? I think. Oh, Motherfucker. Motherfucking <laughs> idiot. No. He couldn't even pronounce my name. Right, right. He was he, so rude. He wasn't even trying. I you know. were explaining it to him. I know. So I understand that this can be a tense situation, right? When you're under fire like that, when you're in yeah. front of a congressional panel, closed door, nationally televised congressional panel, a lot of tension, right? You probably want... Uh, a massage, right? Yeah. Maybe even one massage per testimony day. But Brindis, according to the invoices that I saw, you had one in the morning and you had one in the evening. That makes two. I'm not. A, I'm not the accountant like you are. Okay. Why are you looking through the books? Well, <laughs> Who gave you access to the books? So basically, what I did was I went to your computer. Oh my god! I'm the, changing all my passwords right now. <laughs> I tried. This is a violation of my space right here. Password one, two, three is not an adequate password. That's all I'm going to say. It took me three tries to get there. And then I was in and then I could see. Oh, well, you shouldn't be on my computer 
in the first place. I understand that now that it's taken me several hours to actually get into the building we're in right now. Technically, corporate headquarters. I, my card doesn't even work anymore, so I don't know who you're what? talking to on this end. Well, you know what that means. I, anyway, uh, you're in here. So. <laughs> Not sure you're going to get in here tomorrow. Okay, so that's great to know. Mm-hmm. This. <laughs> Not you should decision. change your password, though. Um, at least make the P from P password one two three caps something like that. I did. Okay. All right, guys. As we know, Bernice is very important, very busy. She really is the most important person on our staff, and that is why she can very rarely make it to the recordings. She's so important; she can't be on the fucking show. She keeps this thing running. She keeps the wheels in motion. It's a lot of behind the scenes string pulling. And again, uh, wheels, wheels within wheels. She's spinning them, turning them. Um, they talk to the important people. Right. I mean, this is what you do. So yeah. I feel privileged to have this time with you here today. Oh, well, thank you. Especially to kick off our new show that we're doing, oh our new God. sub show, right? Old Movie Almanac. It's going to be the best, right? Oh, my God. I'm so excited. So what we're doing today is we wanted to give you and ourselves, really, some context for these movies we're talking about. We throw around a lot of dates, a lot of places, a lot of things of importance that we know maybe a little bit enough about to mention, but maybe not enough to explain. So what we're going to do here is totally at random. We're going to pick a year from our window of time, Mm -hmm. 1945 to 1965. We're going to call up our friend Dr. Wikipedia Oh. And we're just going to find out. She's great. What was happening? Love the Wikipedia. Oh, yeah. She's the best. Best in the biz. And we're going to be making the most of her tools, so to speak. Great. So this is what we're going to do. Is I've, uh, I've got the random year generator ready here. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. We are going to let it roll and... You tell me when it should stop. No. The year is 1960. Oh. <gasps> 1960. All right, let's look it up. Amazing. Must be a great year. Now, 1960. As the host, I do a lot of talking about this era, right? Oh, of course. I mean, I'm just making stuff up. Uh, so, uh, sometimes. Sometimes. I'll give you a gist. Yeah. 1960. Here's what I know about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the year after 1959. <laughs> it's the start of the 60s. Yeah. And it ends in a zero. <laughs> <laughs> 1960 in the United States. There is an entry here. Let's find out. What's happening? You want to know who the president was? Yes. Dwight D. Eisenhower. <gasps> Eisenhower, my favorite. Also known as Ike, uh, famed for his campaign slogan, I like Ike. And he was so simple. Yeah. And it makes sense that he won twice. Do you know Dwight Eisenhower at all? Do you know what he did? Nope. Okay. So he is, I mean, he was a president. Him being president was actually not the most important thing that he did in his life. That's amazing. He was most famous for being in charge of all the armies in World War II. That's a big accomplishment. So the allies, right. So everybody, so the UK, everybody in France who was, uh, you know, fighting the good fight and everything, like he's in charge of everybody. And he says, we are going to take back Europe. He does this. And then he makes the very rare, more rare than you would think, move of not making himself an emperor. Like in history, Mm. this is what usually happens. The odds are kind of in your favor. Oh, you are a powerful military figure. You have the might of the world's armies behind you. Why wouldn't you make yourself the king, right? Of course. Most people do this. Napoleon did it. Charlemagne did it. Uh, Caesar did it. Everybody. Everyone wants to be a king. Right. Except for Eisenhower, who... Good for him. Apparently has no interest in this. Takes Europe, gives it back to the Europeans... I mean, there's obviously, it's more complicated than that. Maybe we should do a separate episode about Eisenhower, honestly. <laughs> but that's a very big deal, right? He, yeah. he wins the war in the official sense of being in charge of everything. So anyway, he's your president at this well, point. And he's well done. well done. Well uh, done. We like Ike. We like Ike. 
Now, unfortunately, he was he was a Republican, but this is before Republicans became the Republicans that we know and despise today. Today, yeah. So he also that used used to not be such a bad thing, right? To be a Republican. Well, as the Republicans lo love to remind everybody, Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. Oh, Jesus. Now, of course, that's a hundred years of difference between <laughs> then and when they started saying that, and it's actually things have totally flip flopped. So they're oh, not yeah. anything alike at all. But Ooh. we'll just keep saying it because it's cool. They use that word. So let's see what happened in January, nineteen sixty. Okay. January, it's cold. It's mm -hmm. winter time. January 2nd, 1960, U.S. Senator John F. Kennedy, Democrat from Massachusetts, announces his candidacy for the Democratic presidential nomination. Whoa. So we all know how that turned out. Oh, yeah. He wins. And, oh, well, and he loses, really. Yeah. Mm. Stay tuned for that. I mean, 63, that was at the end of 63. That falls within our time window. We may be talking about that in the near future. Mm. Now, let's talk about January 19th. The Treaty of Mutual Cooperation and Security between the United States and Japan is signed in Washington, D.C. Now, of course, Japan during the Second World War would be on the opposing side to the United yeah. States. But real quick, uh, this will be uh, we're making the show up as we go along, folks. So we're going to open a, a new tab yeah. to find out what this treaty was all about. What's happening? Mm, more commonly known as the U.S.-Japan Security Treaty. It permits the presence of U.S. military bases on Japanese soil and commits the two nations to defend each other if one or the other is attacked in the territories under the administration of Japan. Interesting. Okay. Over time, it has the effect of establishing a military alliance between the United States and Japan. So, 15 years after the war ends, we finally get it together and we are now friends and this is why we are all up in Japan's business, the United States. Oh, yeah. And all right. I had no idea. I had no idea this was a thing. We learned a thing. We learned a thing, people. Now, January 23rd, though. Mm. Jacques Picard and Don Walsh descend into the Mariana Trench in the Bathyscape Trieste, reaching the depth of 10,916 meters. Now, Mariana, Mariana Trench... The deepest, it's as low as you can go on the surface of the earth. Okay. So this must have been quite something. The Bathyscaphe Trieste. Discovered. We got to open a new tab. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, it's that's just... not interesting. Okay. Uh, it is a Swiss-designed, Italian-built, deep-diving research bathyscaphe, which, well, of course, <laughs> which reached a record depth of about 10,000. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And basically, it looks like this. Sort of a submarine with some kind of a uh, big old globe attached to the bottom, Is something it a like this. Camera could be a cam could be a camera. I don't know. Back in the day, it must be huge. Of course, huge. It's gonna go <laughs> so deep. Best camera in the world. Bastard. <laughs> mm, okay, let's see. So January, we also have in Washington D.C. Of course, your adopted hometown. <laughs> The National Association of Broadcasters reacts to the payola scandal by threatening fines for any disc jockeys accepting money for playing particular records. This was a real problem, apparently, called payola. Listen, hey, we've got this hot new band. They've got a record. I'm going to give you this money. You're going to play it. Boom. I don't know how that's different from actual radio, real radio business. I'm not sure what separates this. It's the beginning of it, maybe? I, yeah, it could be. Uh, I definitely know that by the 70s, this had evolved to, I'm not going to give you money, but I'm going to give you a whole bunch of drugs, and you're going to play this record. I'm a record company promoter. Have yeah. this cocaine. Oh, that would be great. Mm, Invite but, me to that party. Uh, I want to check on this payola um, issue here. Payola in the music industry is the illegal practice of paying a commercial radio station to play a song without the station disclosing the payment. Oh, so it's the secret aspect of it. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. Let's get serious, though, for a minute here. Okay. February, February 1st, 1960. 60s, as any documentary will tell you, was a tumultuous time for the United States. Yeah. Especially regarding race relations. Oh, yeah. 
So we should note for the record yet again, we've talked about it before, but let's hit this note one more time. The United States' biggest problem is its relationship with different races. Yeah. This is the ground zero, right? Starting from the word go and the fact that some people whose skin was a certain color were enslaved and other people, different color skin, were not enslaved. This is the beginning of the inequality. It starts at the very beginning of the country. Yeah. Before the country is a country, it's a thing that's already embedded into the fabric of the culture. By 1960, though, things are starting to pick up speed as far as, hey, we African-Americans are starting to announce that we are fucking done with this. It really started in the 50s and with uh, school busing programs. And, yes. And it worked to a degree, but now we live in 2022 and... Things are awful again. But in February of 1960, you had the Greensboro sit-ins where this is in North Carolina, where four black students from North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University begin a sit-in at a segregated Woolworth's lunch counter. So at this point, you have this system called Jim Crow, Jim Crow laws, where basically it's a separate but equal society. So if you're black, you have to go sit at the black tables. You have to go sit the back of the bus Yeah, where we put black people. You have to use the water fountain that says it can be used by black people and you have to use different toilets. I mean, it's a, yeah, it's crazy to think about. It's not that long ago. It's not that long ago. You know what I mean? And there's still plenty of people out there who would love to see things go back to that. Oh, shit. And so, but this is the passive resistance that was made famous by civil rights leaders of the time, most notably Martin Luther King. Yeah. Who says, look, the... If we start getting violent about this, nobody's going to listen to us and our message and take it seriously. Uh, We see this, we see echoes of this today with Black Lives Matter and peaceful protesting being met with very fierce and violent resistance from the man. Um, Not unlike what happened back in these days when you get hit with a fire hose or send the dogs after you or whatever. But at this point, uh, we are doing the passive sit-in. So although they refused service... Oh, they are refused service. They are allowed to stay at the counter. The event triggers many similar nonviolent protests throughout the southern United States. And six months later, the original four protesters are served lunch at the same counter. That's kind of nice. All right. That's progress. Big progress. Very good. February 9th. This is a real left-hand turn from what we were just talking about. Adolf Coors III. First of all, Adolf not the most popular of names uh, these days. It's banned. Is it banned? Yeah. Is it banned here? No. Just in general? Uh, yeah, in some countries. Uh, I w- yeah, I would imagine so, right? Mm. You're not going to Germany. And- no, it's, it's banned. Okay. The chairman of the board of the Coors Brewing Company, Tap the Rockies, Coors Light. This was a commercial. Is kidnapped in the United States. And his Shit. captors demand a ransom of five hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for well, any time, but especially back then. Yeah. Coors is later found murdered, and Joseph Corbett Jr. is indicted for the crime. Who is Joseph Corbett Jr.? I hear you asking. <laughs> the answer. He must be the one who did it. He was convicted of the kidnapping and murder of Adolf Coors the Third. Uh, background he was convicted he was con- also convicted of shooting a man in the back of the head in 1951 who is this person he looks like this type of man he's a serial killer yeah he's a lonely white man he's a serial killer yeah serial killer glasses he got life imprisonment but was paroled in 1980 interesting and he went back to killing that's a great question uh First degree murder, sentenced to life imprisonment. He was paroled and released from prison December 12th, 1980. In 1996, Corbett gave his only interview following his release from prison. In it, he maintained his innocence. Psycho. So you watch a lot of these scary shows, right? Oh, yes. I'm a killer. My favorite. Do, <laughs> do they always maintain their innocence? No. Oh, okay. 
the serial killers usually like to talk about how take, many. Take the credit, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is usually how they like to get caught. Or not like they like to get caught, but this is usually how they get caught is they... They do want to talk a lot. They want to talk and they also want to go revisit the crime scene. Oh, yeah. You know, we need my sister, Dr. Crime, to Ugh. actually tell us all about this. We need to do a crime show. It's one of the things uh, Brittany and I share. We have very smart sisters, right? Yes, we do. They're better than us. We can just, 100%. We can just say it, right? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't know how you see it, but we're we're really there to support and protect them from the. You know, we we provide something else. We yes. were just talking about this the other day. Yes. We, we give them something else. We can't do no. You know the science that I, they do, right? I'm not a scientist at all. No. I do numbers. You, uh, you're the accountant. That's what we, also what we call you. Yes. We also call you. I don't know if you're aware of this. We also have been calling you the Atomic Lady. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, Why? Yeah. It's one. It's one of your nicknames. It will be a T-shirt, but thank you. Yeah, yes, there you go. Definitely, that's me. Anyway, we have smart sisters, and they will maybe we ask them to help us sometimes when we run into these tough, tricky issues. Oh yeah. Uh, Corbett, by the way, committed suicide by a single gunshot wound in the head. Two well, thousand nine. Serial killers do not do that. So, um, so he's innocent, is what you're saying. No. <laughs> I'm saying he's a killer. You're not such a, a truth serial seeker. <laughs> killer. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. I am a truth seeker. That's correct. Yeah, you're a seeker. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, February 11th, 1960. Oh my God, what happened? The airship ZPG3W is destroyed in a storm in Massachusetts. I only bring this up because ZPG3W is a hyperlink. And I just want to see what this Ooh. airship looks like. Show us. It looks like one of these. It's a dirigible. It's a blimp. It is a blimp. It is Zeppelin-esque. It is pretty decent size. This is, you know, you could advertise uh, tires on the side of this thing. Definitely. You could shoot a football game from the sky in one of these. Would you like to know? It's it's actually an N-class blimp, popularly known as the Nan ship. Why? <laughs> It's Nan on that like ship. Grandma, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Thank you. Uh, it was a line of non-rigid airships built by the Goodyear Aircraft. Oh, oh okay. So it is one oh. of the tire tire blimps. Okay, Look great. Look at you. I just you, pulled that out. You got that. Wow. Uh, they're Good from job. Akron, Ohio. I mean, occasionally, I mean, even a broken clock is right twice a day, right? That's true. This line of airships was developed through many versions and assigned various designators as the airship designation system changed in the post-World War II era. This is gripping news for everybody. Oh, yeah. You're welcome, audience. I mean, someone is definitely going to use the Wikipedias to find out. We're just saving them the, the search. I know. You know what I mean? Like, and we're giving them some, some great commentary. Oh, I mean, it. come on. This is priceless. This is why you listen to us. Uh, February 18th, 1960. Did no, you know? Fe February 14th. No Valentine's oh. murder scene. Uh, no, there's a 13th. You want the 13th? We did the 13th. No, we did the 11th. Oh, what happened in the 13th? I thought you were the numbers expert. <laughs> hey, stop it. I have two brain cells right now. <laughs> Idiot sandwich. <laughs> Long eyeballs. Long eyeballs. Uh, <laughs> Joan is my maid. Joan is my maid. <laughs> I'm gonna get all. I'm gonna get the buttons working. I know. I'm gonna get them working. I know it's gonna. February thirteenth, the Nashville sit-ins begin. I have to assume that that's similar to the Woolworths lunch counter, but I guess to be complete, we're nothing if not completists here, right? Yeah. The Nashville sit-ins, which lasted from February thirteenth to May tenth, mm -hmm. were part of a protest to end racial segregation at lunch counters in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. And then there's more, but okay, so that's. What it sounds like. Yeah. All right. Great. 1960, February 18th, the Winter Olympics open. <gasps> My favorite. In Squaw Valley, Placer County, California. Ah, of course, the Squaw Valley Olympics. I've never heard of this um, at all. It's 1960, though. Your winter over summer Olympics? I love winter Olympics. Is it the Iceland thing? No. It's just general, the better events? I don't know. I like both, though. Do you, I, you, I remember being on maternity leave mm -hmm. 2016. Great year. Uh, and we had the Olympics. Where was this one at? Was that China? Uh, yeah. 
Okay. Beijing? I think so. Oh, okay. Right. We are oh. on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> you should Google. <laughs> no, it wasn't. 2016. It, it they was, were winter. No, no, it was oh. the summer ones. That's right. Um, what, what? I think it was Rio de Janeiro. The correct answer is Rio. That's right. Thank you. That's right. Thank well done. Thank you. <laughs> The accountant strikes again. She's got her numbers in order, everybody. Yeah, sure. We'll give it up. Why not? Thank you. Why not? Thank Why you. not? It was great. Okay, so quick follow-up then. If you are winter over summer, what's your event? What's the one that you're really looking forward to? So, obviously love the gymnastics. I used to do gymnastics when I was a girl. Mm -hmm. But I love diving. Winter Olympics? No, no, that's Summer Olympics. Oh, okay. So, so summer yeah. is diving. Okay. And winter yeah. is the ski jump. The big one. Yeah. When they're like the, floating they're, in the air. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. And folks, when I said like that, I was doing it in perfect, <laughs> perfect form where I have my arms down and I'm pointed up to the front with my head. And so, then I land and then I get a gold medal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I always, uh, I always like the bobsled. The bobsled is good though. Kind of, kind of my speed because you can sit down. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not that they're not athletic. I know they are. Oh, yeah. Of a lot of skill, a lot of athleticism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I get it, I get it. But I also, get it, I get it. you get to just like drive a sled around. Know. You know what I'm talking about? Like, it's also just like you have to stop with your legs, though. Is that how it works? Yeah. It's like a Flintstone car? Yeah. Where you. No, you lie. That's li not true. You, you lie down. Yeah. So when you go up, you use your feet to slow down. So they they're in this costume, right? Right. And they use their feet. They go into the sled. Yeah. Lay down. Yeah. And then they use their body, like yeah. the core, right. to stabilize. Yeah. And they then they use their feet to like try to stop a little bit, so but they don't go over. It's like have you watched this one? <laughs> because we had the Winter Olympics uh, this year. In mm. February. Okay. And we watched a lot of that. Okay, that okay. That was me and my child's favorite event. They use their feet. And they use them by, like, you see them coming out the bottom of the sled and they... they no, they just use the, it to stabilize. Like, is there, like, a braking they, system or something inside no, the... No, they use their feet. We're talking bobsled, right? Not luge? I don't know what that is. Google uh. bobsled. <laughs> if I'm making this up, I have two brain cells. And you need to give me a break. Bobsled is these guys. Yeah. This guy. No, not this one. I'm telling I think you're talking luge or, okay. or skeleton. Do you know skeleton? They run. So like they put their hands on the board. They run and they slide down. Like this guy. Oh. Maybe? Yeah. So that's luge. Oh. So now we're luge. And the reason I didn't pick luge is because... It's a loser. <laughs> <laughs> it's a loser. Luge. There's no outside protection, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that's a, I mean, that sucks. I, I want to be no. inside the vehicle. No. Yeah. But you know bobsleds, right? Now, now I've shown you a picture of a bobsled. Yeah. And okay, so you've got two guys on each side, and when you're all pushing at the yeah, same I, time. Yeah, right? I didn't see that one. And then they. <laughs> <laughs> but you've seen it before, right? Yes. Did you ever see Cool Runnings? No. Oh. About the Jamaican bobsled team? No. Jamaica had a bobsled team, and the coach was celebrated Canadian comedian John Candy. What? In this movie, in this movie. Wow. It's a bunch of rejected. Uh, track Olympiads who don't make the cut. And so they decide, well, we don't want to wait for four years for the next Summer Olympics. Yeah. Let's start a bobsled team. Nobody will believe it. And it turns out, shall I spoil the movie for you? Oh, yeah, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to spend an uh, hour and 40 minutes uh, watching about the no. Jamaican bobsled? No. Jamaican bobsled? No. Well, it turns out they're not very good at no. it. <laughs> no, they get no they get good, way. but they crash, and then at the end, well, at the end, at the end they crash, but they don't just crash and then end of movie. They crawl out of their little sled, their bobsled, and they run, 
they pick it up and they, and they it walk it. it over the finish line. And everybody does one of these. Oh, Jesus. That's a cheesy movie. Not a dry eye in the house. Oh, Jesus. You're going to cry. No. It's horrible. So the luge, though, this is interesting. You've just uh, enlightened me to new luge facts. You've illusioned me? Mm, nah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you like it? All right. I like it. Okay. You've uh, illusioned, illusioned me to the fact that they're using their feet at all. Because I would have thought just like keep them flat, right? These no. are my feet. Yeah. These are hands. But for right now, they're my feet. Keep them flat like that. Yeah. Maybe kind of pointed in like that. Yeah. For, to be aerodynamic. But you're saying that they're like scooching. Yeah, of, because if they go too fast, yeah. if they're starting to slide. They get scared. Light, <laughs> they cry. <laughs> yeah, they cry. Yeah. And they scream when they run before they go into. Oh, sure. Them. Okay. They okay. scream like. Ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't you? I would. I Everybody's know. watching me. It's and I'm, like, I'm wearing this. Full body singlet thing, and I'm sledding for a living. Yeah, I'm gonna scream. Like they're a, jacked though. Yeah, well, of course. I mean, yeah, of course. They're doing they're things. on a fucking sled, dude. It's so stupid. No, they gotta it's run not. real fast. They it's gotta, not. I don't mean to offend anyone. They gotta do this. Oh, we do have a very heavy luge audience. <laughs> we must respect them and their no <laughs> disrespect honestly yeah, yeah, yeah. i could not do it i promise you i would just cry the whole way down because i'm afraid of heights and afraid of things that go really fast mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so so you love roller coasters hate them yeah. with a passion yeah interesting this was and water and heights <laughs> <laughs> and bees <laughs> and birds <laughs> No, wait. Okay, so I know about the bees. Brindis is afraid of bees. There's a complex. We've kind of traced it back oh to... God. The best analysis ever. <laughs> Guys, do you remember the film <laughs> My Girl? Party line at oldmovietimemachine.com. Write us if you remember the movie oh my, my Girl. God. And then what happens? He, The boy dies. It's it's John was... McClockett. What do you say? How do you spell? Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> Macaulay Culkin. Now, now I'm confused. Macaulay Culkin. Yes. Yeah, John McLaughlin. Oh, yeah. The famous jazz guitarist. <laughs> He's the best. It's a difficult name to pronounce. The Home Alone guy. Macaulay Culkin. That is not a good name. You're right. That's, it's not. That's not easy to no. get around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely got it wrong. I'm sorry. I mean, that's, no that's disrespect. Cool. He's I've, a great actor. I've just in, uh, illusioned you to how you pronounce <laughs> Macaulay Culkin. Thank you. I'm not going to say his name again. Um, so Mac. Call him Mac. That's Mac. what everybody called him back in the day. Oh, my God. Oh, Mac. Oh, Mac. So he plays the boy. Yeah. I cried so much. Is is the girl of my girl, is that his girl? Yeah. Is that title him saying, you're my girl? Mm, they're young, though. They're super young. Yeah, right. They're like 10, 10 like 12. Yeah. But it's such a sad story. Yeah. And on this small island that we live on, mm -hmm. we didn't get a lot of films. We did get some, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But it sounded to my parents like a great movie to rent. On the surface, that makes total sense. Two cute kids getting together, having summer a summertime movie, yeah. right? Getting to know one another and being friends, maybe falling in love. First love, right? Yeah. Sold. Being smitten with each other. Yeah. Stick the it boys, in the VCR. You got some free time for two hours. He dies. Oh, shit. But he dies in a totally normal way. Maybe he was, I don't know what. Attacked hit, by bees. Hit by a car. Oh, shit. Yeah, that'll His do it. His body was disgusting. <laughs> Wait. So, you haven't seen this movie? I mean, I saw a long, long time ago. I don't remember what his body looked like post bee stings. Though. Can his, describe it for me. His face. It was all lumpy. Was it swollen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Remind me how we get to the point where he is stung by so many bees that you, they kill him. <laughs> what What's the sequence of events that leads up to that? I don't remember. I think he was like giving her flowers or something. Oh, he no. was being super sweet and wanting to give her a thing. I think it was something to do with flowers. Or well, at least he was giving something to this girl because he liked her and she was sweet and and innocent and 
Oh, I'm going to look up a little plot synopsis here. I'm, just, I'm very curious uh, about... Anyway, guys, I'm afraid of bees because I watched my girl. Here's the plot. Oh, boy. Okay. okay. I know. Following the... What the fuck? Okay. When Harry and Shelley start dating, Vada's attitude towards Shelley changes. One night, Vada follows Harry and Shelley to a bingo game and brings Thomas J along to disrupt it. Do you remember this? Yes. Oh. <laughs> On the 4th of July, when Shelley's ex-husband Danny shows up, Vada hopes that he will take Shelley back, but to no avail. Following the holiday and another doctor visit. Oh, is somebody sick? Yeah. Is somebody terminally ill the in this movie? The boy, I think. This is pre-Bees. He's already sick. Maybe I don't know the plot. Vada hangs out with Thomas J. Sennett, an unpopular boy her age who yeah. is allergic to everything, quote unquote. <gasps> he was allergic to the bees. Uh, other girls tease the two, thinking that they are more than just friends. Thomas J. often accompanies Vada when she visits the doctor who assures her that she is not sick. Oh, so she maybe? She's sick and he's allergic to the bees. Interesting. Okay, so her upbringing leads her to suffer from hypochondria. And develop an obsession with death. Oh, this is a whole different thing. So this is all up upstairs for her. I, I would like to point out, I was really young when I watched the movie. And it was not dubbed. So it was in English with subtitles. There's no judgment happening. There's no way that I knew any of the storyline. I just knew that the boy got stung by bees <laughs> and he died. <laughs> That's your big takeaway. I'm, I'm just remembering how young I was. Yeah, yeah. And there's no way that I could read... The subtitles, and I right. could not understand the film. Right. Why was I watching this? Mom, are you listening? What the fuck? Yeah. Should we bring, do we need to bring her on at some point? I think so. Okay. Okay. Explain your supplement. Uh, where did you find a copy of My Girl? <laughs> Why did you make your daughter watch it? I cried. Why did you so make much. her cry? I'm a cancer girl. I mean, come on. You guys know this, you guys the, cry babies? The sign the 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 sign. No, not the sign. Yeah, I'm a crybaby. No, I'm not. I've got trouble with age. My mom is a cancer too. Oh, okay. I don't have cancer. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got it. Got it. yeah. yeah. I am I cancer. You're a cancer, right. Thank you. You're not crying because of your cancers. No. <laughs> okay. I don't have cancer. I am a cancer. I used to cry a lot when I was a young girl. Does your mom cry? Is she a crier? Uh, not to my face. Uh, really? Yep. Because sometimes I feel like my mom exclusively cries to my face. Mom, I love you. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, we love you, she mom. She misses me, and I am bad with phone calls. Oh, no. <laughs> it's my fault, mom. I love you. Oh, no. Always call your mom. Of course. No, we we got tougher with age. Well, I, I used to cry a lot when I was a child. Well, you did have... Was it your brother? Did, uh, was he making you cry? No, he was a he was the crybaby. Oh, interesting. Yeah, sorry, okay. brother. <laughs> I know you're tall and everything, but you were crybaby. He got tall as a defense mechanism to in response to his crying. He was a big baby. It may have. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Uh, so Thomas J returns to the woods to search for Vada's mood ring. Oh my goodness! What is this movie? I know. Unaware that the beehive he knocked down is still active. Oh. Yo, yo. Oh. I remember the beehive. <laughs> remember, I watched the Her film. Her eyes I just did not lit up, folks. understand anything. Yeah, okay, right, right. Uh, he is killed by the bees due <laughs> to his allergy. It's not funny, but... It is not. It's sad, right? I didn't know she was a hypochondriac. Oh, she continues her grieving by the willow tree where she and Thomas J. hung out. When she returns home, everyone is relieved. But he oh died. God. Is this a... Should I watch this? I think we should watch this film. Should we do a commentary track for this? I think so. Oh, fuck. Okay. It's a sad movie. Put that on the list. Of the, that's a promise made. Yes. That's a promise made. Let's do it. Okay, great. I know you guys have watched that film. Man, I am so glad that... How... Wh when was it... Uh, what year was it? Uh, 31 years after the year we're talking about. 1991. Hmm... Sounds about right. It's a good year. Yeah. I was two. I did not watch the film, obviously, when I was two. Just a disclaimer. It was in circulation. It was out there. Yeah. It was out there. See, I remember this movie as being one that was on a cable channel, like oh. like a Showtime, maybe. Mm -hmm. 
and you know they like every month they get seven movies and they just loop play them all in yeah. a loop forever and ever so there are so many movies from this time period that i've seen dozens of times i don't even like them but they were just on <laughs> i and, know and i would just always sit that used to be us and just leave it on and just watch whatever the television tells me to watch i I, I will watch it and put, build with my legos or whatever boy this who knew that the same year that john f kennedy announces his candidacy <laughs> to be president would lead us to my girl the 1991 feature film let's just finish up february here real quick yes and then we'll see where we're at. So, okay, Nashville, uh, 1960 Winter Olympics. We got that squared away. There are luges. There are bobsleds. I want to look. Sorry, guys. Just re- no. This is all the show is. This is the entire. This is an old movie almanac. <laughs> here we are. I think there's something. There's an event called Skeleton, mm, the sport. Ooh. But I want to see if it's different. How it, it differs cool. from right. Skeleton is a winter sliding sport. Interesting. Sounds about right. Do you have a picture? It is. Yes. I can see it. This is Nozomi Kumoro. Mm. One of the great My favorite. Skeleton, skeleton people. Looks luge right? I think I'm talking about this one. Well, I'm not sure what the... Shit, man. I don't know. Maybe... Okay. What is the... Should I just do a... Mm. They were running and they were lying down... Unlike other sliding sports of bobsleigh, bobsleigh. <gasps> is that different from bobsledding or is bob? No, that's it. bobs. No, it's bobsledding. Okay, it's the okay. same thing. All right. Oh, sleigh. Unlike other sliding sports, bobsleigh and luge, the race always involves single riders. Yeah. Okay. Makes because sense. I've seen this on luge where they're like sitting on top of each other. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's in these outfits. Yeah. Love that. A lot of friction. A lot of <laughs> <laughs> They're real of, close, huh? <laughs> it's not what you think, Carl. <laughs> Just keep sliding. <laughs> Just come on. It's not gay. It's stop, stop thinking about it. It's... <laughs> Just hold on. You're overthinking this. Hold on tighter. We're going to the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great point because... You don't just wake up in the morning and decide, I'm going to enter the Olympics. Like, there, there's years of practice involved of like, hey, Carl, you want to sit on my lap and go on a sled? And go, go sledding? We'll, we'll give us a medal. <laughs> probably all of the people up in the Canada were doing that. They're yeah. Really good. Canada is really good. We should do some research on that. <laughs> we might, we might to have to do- take a trip. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. We report from the field. Yes. The skeleton sled is thinner and heavier than the luge sled, and skeleton gives the rider more precise control of the sled. Yeah, I think that's the one I'm talking about. Oh, so you're... Okay. Skeleton is the slowest of the three sliding sports. The three sliding sports. I, I've <laughs> never heard of that before. Now, that's all I'm thinking of. I know. All I'm saying. A skeleton's... Face down, head first, riding position is less aerodynamic than luge's face head up, first. feet first ride. So, oh, okay, then it's not the same. Then it's luge. Thing. Yeah, then it's luge. Because they're going like this, and I'm doing the yeah. The these, are, these are hands, their hands. And feet. yeah. They have like like things like they wear gloves, so they lie down. Yeah, and they use their hands. They have like spikes on the gloves, and they, oh. they do like. This is when they're. F- Face first. Yeah, no. Their faces, they have feet first. Feet, feet first, so they're... Yeah. They're, they're like paddling? Yeah, like, they're using their hands the, with the spikes. Okay, okay. And they're yelling. They're like... Yeah. And then their hands, the hands go on the sled, like next to their body. Yeah. And then they use their feet to like slip and slide. I'm telling you, it's a great sport. <laughs> it sounds like it. It also sounds totally random too because again, the athleticism, I'm not saying it's not athletic. Yeah. You're sitting on a thing. They're jacked. They're short and they're jacked. This is like, a, a again, this is, if I was going to do, if I was going to be in the Olympics, <laughs> I want, I want to be in, involved in the sliding sports, the, the three sliding sports. <laughs> And I'll I'll hit the gym. It's not it's not a matter of that or the athleticism, but just like the fact that you just take a seat 
and you kind of you're just kind of cruising, right? They're don't, don't definitely they have, not fucking cruising. Distance. Don't they? <laughs> They're jacked, and it's not from the gym. I promise you that. It's, it's, it's from years. the paddling. It's from the yeah. <laughs> you have to have like strong fingers. So they and toes. They're doing finger exercises. <laughs> Definitely. On Sundays, they're like, <laughs> finger dancing oh. and everything. I'm telling you. You look so tired this today. What's, what's happening? I got oh up early. I had to do 45-minute finger exercise routine. Fingers killing My me. My finger's core is so sore. Ugh. Oh, it's so hard. Going to the Olympics. No, I think I strained my From knuckle. Canada. <laughs> Well, great. I, I mean, we've really gotten to the bottom of that. Uh, the three sliding sports, that's our big takeaway. Okay, so b- wrapping up February, February 29th, mm. the first... 29th? It's a leap year. Oh, it's a leap year. Oh, shit. shit. Okay. I hope they used... Uh, they, they did special... Some, I hope they did... <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah. Hey, okay, okay. I hope they did something special that day because that's a freebie, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. I have... Definitely don't go to work. You're sick that day. I don't, it's not a day that exists. I never know when it's happening. Has it happened recently? Yeah. Is it every four years? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. That's real. Yeah. 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 So like the Olympics, leap day. It's leap day, right? Leap year. I'm just leap year. I am just saying words at this point. Leap year. Years. Mm-hmm. Googling. 2024. 20, oh. So it was a COVID year was the leap year? Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Fucking sucked. Damn it. Every day was a leap day. Uh, well, in 1960s leap, leap year, leap day. Year? It's But it's a day too, right? I mean. It's called a leap year though. What years are leap years? It's dividable evenly by four. Hmm. Leap year 2024 will begin Monday, January 1st. Do you have any plans? On leap year? Yeah, 2024. Definitely not going to be pregnant, I tell you that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) She's made some decisions in her life. And I'm not going to be pregnant. I'm going to be enjoying (laughs) a glass of wine and a good steak. With your, yeah, with your very quiet two-year-old, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Very nope. quiet, immobile she, two-year-old. She won't be quiet. No, nah, she's talking the whole time. Oh, and I have an eight-year-old. <laughs> and he's not quiet either. Oh, he's a mom. Help me now. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to be drinking. That's for those sure. Are, those are the plans. Book it. Book it. 2024. He has February drinks. 29th. Um, well, February 29th, 1960, the first Playboy Club opens in Chicago. Oh. Now, you, of course, know Playboy magazine, right? Of course. You know the Playboy Mansion. Of course. You know the bunny. Yeah. And the bunnies. The ladies, mm-hmm. and then also the logo, right? Yeah. The Playboy Club. Let's just take a was look Was it a nightclub? It was a night nightclub. A chain of nightclubs and resorts owned and operated by Playboy Enterprises. It's not, does not exist anymore, right? Mm, I think that it might actually. Members and their guests were served food and drinks by Playboy bunnies, some of whom were featured in Playboy magazine. Oh. The clubs they offered. They got downgraded to waitresses. To carry this tray around. Yeah, mm. yeah. The clubs offered name entertainers and comedians in the club rooms and local musicians and the occasional close-up magician in the living room. The living rooms is capitalized, so that must be a thing. Okay. Let's see if this still exists today. No, it must have died with you. Hmm. On September 12, 2018, a Playboy Club was opened in New York City. Many question the wisdom of opening a Playboy Club in the hashtag MeToo era. Great points. Great point. He didn't really get that Me Too, though. He dodged that pretty well. And he died. But he also... He, <laughs> that is the ultimate exit, isn't it? What a great, way to, what a great I mean, way to dodge. When did he die? 2019? It's pretty recent, yeah. It was pre-COVID. Um, right? Hugh Hefner, wearing a very silly sailing hat, and he died... 2017. Shit. Hey. Guess how old he was. 
I think he was like 87. 91. Shit. Still. Interesting. In that nightgown. In with that same his, hat. Yeah, his, his with the 20 year old. Yeah. That's disgusting. Uh, I got a bunch of. Uh, this is my Hugh Hefner voice. I don't know if this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what he sounded like, but I got a bunch of girlfriends. They love me. Ew. You know, three of them. He must be, he must have smelt so bad. They. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, honestly. Ugh. Yeah. And can you imagine, because it was always more than one, you know, like. Yeah. I. Uh, what, what price for a centerfold, uh, you know? Because, you know, anybody who showed up in there had to go through him first to get there. It, back in the day, yes. But in recent years, I mean. Porn is free on the internet. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, my pipe boy was uh, like a collector's item at that point. Yeah, like that whole thing was done. Right. In but, like, but he was just living this life. Yeah. I mean, I remember the in the nineties making fun of him for being an old pervert. Right. Yeah. Like he just continued to be an old pervert for and another he, thirty years. He was ex- uh, accepted pervert. Yeah, he was a like a a, a well respected pervert. People were, because it was a, a, still a thing to go to the Playboy Mansion yeah. with the other perverts. Like, that was a place to hang out and do things. I don't get that. Maybe that's a blanket statement. I'm sorry for all of you non perverts who went to the Playboy Mansion. Mm. I'm sure you're I mean, there. If, if you're a listener of ours and you have been to the Playboy Mansion, please share your story. Yeah, we party line it. at oldmovietimemachine.com. It fits in our, uh, our zone of what we talk about. Yeah. Which is exclusively the years of 1945 to 1965, and also anything related to the three sliding sports: luge, skeleton, or bobsleigh. <laughs> bobsleigh. Bobsleigh. It's bobsledding. Mm-hmm. And my girl. And and of course, the classic 1991. Everyone's seen young that romance, though. My girl. Oh yeah. I mean, I. I have I not saw, seen I, that movie since, though. I saw it when I was like seven. Maybe this is how we defeat your fear of bees. Maybe we show it to you again. Maybe I'll, <laughs> We double down. Maybe I'll get more scared. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring my girl and then a bee. <laughs> <laughs> Just see what happens. That would be so mean. <laughs> and when they start eating him alive, you will release the bee. And I'll be a like, little, ah! A little bee-sized microphone for the bee to make Shit. some comments. Uh, oh, thank you. The Playboy Club that opened in 2018, by the way, closed in 2019. So it's done. It's done. It's fucking finally. Um, That's disgusting. Please never, ever do that again. Yeah. White males. Sep- old perverts. By the way, September 2011 saw the premiere of NBC's The Playboy Club, a television series focusing on the employees and patrons of the first Playboy Club. Well, that makes sense. Uh, that's an age, you know, that we're still in of reality television, I guess, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. making all kinds of what? shows about working on cruise ships or what, what not, why not the Playboy Club, right? That's true. But, but anyways, we've only gotten through February of 1960, which means that we're just going to have to cycle back to 1960 at some point. I know. It's really whenever the random number generator allows us to do that though. So we must make a note. I've got so many notes to keep that yeah. I keep noting that I need to note them and then I never do. I will at some point write down that, okay, f- January, February, 1960, taken care of. I'm mimicking it. If you gave me a pen and put paper under it, I would actually be writing the note, no. but we're not going to do that. We're, we're not going to do that. But anyway, Definitely. thank you so much for joining us on thank you guys this journey through time and or space uh, as we discuss the united states in the year of 1960 tune in next time when we discuss some other random year uh from this era and we will talk about at least let us know which year you would like us to talk about what's your favorite year what's your favorite year guys Come on, we know you have a favorite. Yeah, this is our call to action to you. Think about your favorite year and then tell us. And maybe we'll talk about that year. (sighs) Unless it has bees. No bees. This has been Old Movie Almanac. Bye. Bye.